Okay. We did some scripture readings that uh, will come into play as we go through this message. Um, we're going to look at the wonderment of the scriptures um, that many miss, many, in Christendom, so called. Um, you know, you find yourself in this, this time we live in, um, there's an assault on religion in this country. And the uh, Judeo Christian uh, uh, formation of the nation, uh, as it was formed, and that constitution was the document to rule this nation. And we see right now what, what particular religion is being hunted right now? No. Christianity. 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 Our founders came over here with what? Bibles. Do they teach them? William Bradford, we did that message, right? And they were Bible believers. And our Constitution, you can go to Isaiah. Did you know that the three branches of government are in Isaiah? That, that those people formed? Where do you think they got that from? They got it from the Bible. Um, those three branches are not actually operating very well today in terms of defending that Constitution. But I say all this um, to, for you to understand that, you know, we, we see Christianity assaulted, but you understand it's apostate Christianity that's being assaulted. And you still feel defensive, don't you? For, for those folks, but it's apostate Christianity, right? Apostate Christianity that embraces holy days, right? False days, unbiblical, unbiblical. We're Bible people. We're the people of a book. We're not the people of religion and tradition, of apostasy. We're not. And that's great. You know why? Our focus is the Word of God. People start talking about some of these fringe things, right? And then you just go to the verses. Do you got some understanding in the verses? Show me. Show me. You know what? I'll gladly receive it if I can understand it. Um, the wonderment of the Scriptures we're going to look at a little bit today. And it's amazing. <laughs> but then again, who wrote the book? <laughs> yeah. We should expect it. We should look for it. Every word. Um, look at First Timothy one three. First Timothy one three. First Timothy one three. You know our founders um, in the Constitution. Um, is there any such thing as separation of church and state in all purviews of life? especially public schools which are tax supported by the government any such thing what is there what did they flee what did those folks that came from Holland they got so persecuted in England flee the state church the church of England they fled the church of England what was the church of England doing to them they called them separatists back then they were they, they were torturing them. They were killing them. So they fled to Holland. And what did they form? A charter with investors to do what? Not the first time, but the second time. That second charter with those folk, those separatists from Holland, came to this country due to those investors. And what's one? What what is? What did they flee? The Church of England. So what did they put in the Constitution? There is to be no state religion formed. This thing that they're doing now has nothing to do with our Constitution. Nothing to do with it. Now, I say all that just like Paul. Did Paul understand Roman law? Yes. How do you think he did that? Did he ignore being a Roman? Yes. Did he know the law? Specifically, in point, he did. Why? Hey, he lived there and learned it. He says you've got to follow your own laws. Are you, a are, are, are you a people governed by the rule of law or not? Was Israel governed by the rule of law, divine law? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, what happened when they moved from it? 
Lord didn't appreciate it, did he? They suffered. Lord didn't appreciate it. Um, if you look at First Timothy one three, First Timothy verse chapter one verse three. Paul writes, As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, he's talking to Timothy to stay at Ephesus, when I went into Macedonia, okay, that's Europe, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine, neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. We give no heed to fables, stories, or endless genealogies. Uh, the genealogy um, that's ours is of the Spirit of God written down in the Book of Life. Do we have copies of that? No, we don't. <laughs> Do we? But are our names written down in there? But we don't have copies of it. There's nothing to refer to. Not the case with the Jews. That's not true of the Jews. Um, genealogies were an important part of Jewish life. Look at Nehemiah 7.5. Nehemiah 7.5. Nehemiah 7.5. Nehemiah 7, verse 5. And my God put into mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by... See that? genealogy and I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at, at the first and found written therein what's happened well Nehemiah is building the wall around what the city Jerusalem and what's happening inside the wall there after the Babylonian captivity where the cupbearer Nehemiah right petitions the king and the king says you can go back to your land. What's one of the first things they do here? They reckon things with the genealogies that they've kept and preserved and kept up with. Okay, And you know what those genealogies represent as we're going to study today? Uh, when the Jews returned to their land after the Babylonian captivity, they had kept track of the genealogies. And these gene genealogies demonstrated that Jesus Christ was the rightful owner of the land of Palestine. You know all this stuff that's going on over there? Who owns that land? Who's the rightful owner? Who's going to occupy that land? The Lord Jesus Christ. And that makes everything prior to that Kind of silly, doesn't it? Kind of silly. Um, I want you to look at um, Matthew and Luke today. Uh, Matthew and Luke contain genealogies. Okay, 41 names in Matthew, three groups of 14. Luke contains 77 names, 11 groups of seven. Where the genealogies overlap, and we'll see what that means. Okay, where they overlap, Matthew, there's 41 names, and Luke, there's 57. Why do you think Mark and John contain no genealogies? What's the issue with a servant? Not where he comes from, but can he do the work? Will he serve? And genealogy is not relevant. John. The issue is God and Christ from the beginning. God doesn't have a genealogy. Okay? We don't find them in Mark and John, but rather in Matthew and Luke. Um, in Matthew, the genealogy moves forward, expressed by the word beget. Okay? In Luke, the genealogy moves backward, expressed by the phrase son of. And this is critical, absolutely critical to understanding some of the most important things in your Bible, the import, most important tenets of, of uh, the declaration of the Lord. Matthew begins with Jesus Christ, the son of David, and Abraham. Forward from covenant, right? Abraham, first covenant. 
forward from covenant. Jesus Christ is the son of David to rule over the descendants of Abraham. Secondarily, in Matthew, the concern is the land. Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, from whence rose up a great nation. What's, what land? We just said it. We say Canaan, but contemporarily we say what? Palestine. The land of Palestine and Israel in it. Um, Matthew sets forth Jesus as king. The son of David to rule over the descendants of Abraham. Um, Luke sets forth Jesus Christ as the second Adam. He's called the what? Son of man. That genealogy moves backwards all the way to Adam. Okay. Um, Matthew 1, that genealogy in Matthew 1 is the royal lineage of the house of David. It's a kingly royal line. Okay. Look at Matthew 1 6. Matthew 1 6. Matthew 1 6. Matthew 1 6. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. Okay, look at verse 16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Okay? So, Mary. If you look at verse 25, it says of Joseph, and he knew her not till she had brought forth her, notice the word, firstborn. Firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Um, look at verse 21. And she shall bring forth the son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Okay? Now, as Mary is concerned, Jesus Christ, they had other children. Joseph and Mary had children. Okay? Um, but the firstborn is the Christ. And if we look at, for example, um, Mark 6 3, look at Mark 6 3. Mark 6, 3. Mark 6, 3. Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, Joseph, and of Judah, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. Firstborn is who? Is it important that he's the firstborn? Who gets the inheritance? The firstborn. So, six children in Christ, at the least. Okay? And look at Luke 3, and look at verse, let's see, 38. We're going to distinguish between the two genealogies. And then demonstrate why, there, why there's two. Which was the son of Enos, Luke 3.38, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Is Adam called the son of God? Yeah. Is Jesus called the son of God? That's why he's called, we look in 1 Corinthians 15, he's the second Adam. They were both the sons of God. Both Adam and Christ were the sons of God. Now, let's distinguish some things. Take a look at Matthew 1.16. Matthew 1.16. Matthew 1.16. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, 
of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. And Jacob, who was the father of Joseph? Clearly. Jacob in that royal line. Okay, remember that. Jacob. Now take a look at Luke 3.23. Luke 3.23. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age. Luke 3, 23. Being, as was supposed, the son of Joseph. Which means what? Well, we're going to see. Which was the son of Heli. Wait a second here. I thought Jacob was Joseph's father. Here it says he was the son of Heli. So guess what? Joseph has what? According to the scriptures, two fathers, Heli and Jacob. How do you reconcile that? Do you get out the Greek? Start cutting cutting verses out of your Bible? Go to another version? I had a guy that wanted me to be the pastor. I was on the board, the pastor of Shoreward Bible Church, and he got up, and um, that brother changed Colossians three sixteen, and uh, he changed the verse. And I had some folks come up to me afterwards and say, "Didn't you really enjoy that?" And I go, "I went like that. I didn't say anything." And then I asked them, well, "What did you like about him?" Because he changed my Bible. And so I asked Doug Lee why he changed the Bible. Because they were looking for a pastor at that church. And you know what Doug Lee said? We got the Holy Spirit and we choose between the versions. Um, the Holy Spirit guides us to choose through the versions of what's right and wrong. Well, I didn't go any further with him than that. You know, I'm, I'm not going to teach him the issue, right? But is, is, do you want that as a pastor? I wouldn't. I wouldn't want any part of that, right? Somebody that's changing your Bible, the one you got in your hands, because they say they subjectively have the Holy Spirit and they'll change where they think it should be changed. Thinking that you can change between the versions, is that a misunderstanding of what God's produced and preserved? Absolutely. Could he learn better? No, he wasn't willing. Anyhow, I say all that because this is not a mistake. The first thing you do is don't go running for a lexicon. You don't know anything about that. Come on, the Greek and all. You don't know anything about that. The men that produce this Bible, I don't know if you could sharpen their pencil. <laughs> okay? To go through the credentials of those men. Not one of them knew less than three languages. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Point being, how could he have two fathers? Okay, that's the question we ask. How could he have two fathers? Uh, Jacob begat Joseph. That's at the end of the Matthew genealogy, the royal line. Um, uh, 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 Joseph was the son of Eli. Not begotten in the beginning of the, the genealogy in Luke. Okay. Um, What's the difference between begat and son? When we're in the Matthew, the royal line, it's begat, begotten. And son of, what's the difference? One's a blood relative. One may or may not be. But one's a blood relative, absolutely. Okay, look at an example. Look at 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel 24. 1 Samuel 24. First Samuel 24 and look at verse 16. Verse 16. Samuel, 1 Samuel 24. And it came to pass when David had made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, Is this thy voice, my son David? Saul's calling David his son. Who's the father of David? Jesse, right? 
That's that's the blood father. That's who begat David. How come Saul is calling him his son? And that's what the Luke genealogy is. The son of. Correct? How come he's calling him his son? Saul was David's father-in-law. David married Saul's daughter, Michael. In interesting, the word means prevailing wife. When we look at, I won't look at, the, for time's sake today, I won't look at Numbers 27. I'll just express what's there. You can look it up. Or Numbers 36, okay, at the beginning of both those chapters in the book of Numbers. Um, in the law, the man who married the daughter of a father having no son, see that? Having no son, became the son of that father and inherited his property. Is that a good thing? The way the law did that? I produce no daughters. A man wants to marry one of my daughters, firstborn, and all my property goes to him. I now have a what? A son that can inherit, okay, and continue the lineage. That's the law. That's how it worked. Okay. So, accordingly, like David, Joseph had two fathers. The one was what? Blood, Jacob. And the one was what? A father-in-law. What's his name? Heli. What's that mean? Mary's father is Heli. And he had no sons until Joseph came along and married Mary. Okay. Um, look at John 19.25. John 19.25. I mean, you've got to put your thinking cap on, don't you? Uh, does it say study the Word of God? Yeah, it does. This is not an emotional playground. The Church of the Body of Christ. Pardon? Uh, uh, numbers 27 and 36. In Numbers, verses 1 through 11. In uh, 36, 1 through 12. We'll go through this law. Okay. Um, in John 19.25, I hope. Yeah. Now, there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, Mary, and his mother's sister. And his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. So Mary has a sister, but there's no mention of a brother. And that would be logical because Joseph is called the son of Heli. He's the son of that Heli never had. And his property, that inheritance, would go to Joseph. Okay? In Luke, Christ is literally the... Literally means blood. Blood relative. And legally the son of David. He's literally and legally in the two genealogies. He's legally in Matthew and literally in Luke, the son of David. From David to Abraham, from, I'm sorry, from Nathan, I got a little chart. I, I couldn't get it in the bulletin, and we don't have PowerPoint, and so I had to draw it. <laughs> oh, it's like archaic, isn't it? Um, in Luke, Christ is literally and legally the son of David. Legal, legally in Matthew, literally in Luke, from Nathan. Nathan, David, Abraham, backwards. In Luke 3.31. Oh, let's take a look at it just so it's clear. I'm going to get confused. Okay. Luke 3.31. Which was the son of Malia, which was the son of Menon, which was the son of Metatha, Metatha, Mate, wait, Mateha, which was the son of Nathan which was the son of David. See Nathan right there? Now, 
take a look at Matthew 1 6. Matthew 1 6. Matthew 1 6. This isn't all going to come together. It's really not that complicated. It's really not. Matthew 1 6. And Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Urias. What's the difference here? One says Nathan, and one says what? Solomon. Solomon is part of the Matthew kingly royal line. Okay. Nathan is in Mary's genealogy. Okay. And, and, and that um, father there is Nathan. So we got Solomon in one and Nathan in the other. What's this about? Okay, what's this about? Um, that's what we want to determine here today. Um, uh, in Matthew, Christ is from Solomon to David to Abraham, the royal genealogy. Uh, in Luke, okay, it goes from Nathan to David to Abraham in Luke. Um, the descendancy being from the first man, Adam, in that genealogy. Okay. There's a split in the genealogy, beginning with the two sons of David, whose mother was Bathsheba. Nathan is the older brother of Solomon. Okay? And here's the deal there's a satanic plot to break the lineage of Messiah. And that attempt we have to go back and look at a guy okay, who's in the Matthew royal line but is not in the Luke descendancy from Adam to Messiah, to the Christ. Okay, Look at Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22. Jeremiah 22. I pictured this for you over here. Sam's going to hold it up for me so that you could kind of put it all together. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah chapter 22. Jeremiah 22. Okay. At the time of about the Babylonian captivity, okay, uh, Jeremiah prophesies, and he says this, As I live, saith the Lord, though Kaniah the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck thee thence. Okay. Um, in the line of David, Jeconiah, okay, is the father of someone called Jeconiah. Okay. What we have here is the Lord has pulled the prefix in his name and just called him Kaniah. Okay, and we can we're going to prove that. Um, look at verse 28. Is this man Kaniah a despised broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they kept out? He and his what? Seed. He and his seed are cast out and are kept into a land which they know not. Kaniah is cast out. Uh, him and his seed. Okay. He's not childless as we're going to see. He's not childless, but as concerns David's throne, he's childless. As concerns David's throne, he's childless. Okay, look at First Chronicles chapter three. First Chronicles chapter three. This is going to wind up fast. First Chronicles chapter three. Look at verse sixteen. What we're talking about here? Did David have a few wives? Oh yeah. Okay, he did. And so what we have here is all the seed of David through the various wives and concubines. Okay. Um, 
But go down, skip down to verse 16. And the sons of Jehoiakim, his son, was Jeconiah. Okay? His son was Jeconiah. And then you have his seed following. Zedekiah, his son, and on. He has children, this guy. Okay? And, you know, you identified someone by their father in Jewish life. You know, um, in, in Tolkien life, too. Aragorn, the son of Arathorn, right? <laughs> you know, they kind of, you know, steal that from the Jews, you know, that, that idea of, you know, a kingly line. Um, this line is the most important genealogy there ever was because it produced who? The son of man, the son of God. Okay. Um, t uh, uh, take a look at Matthew one. Let's let's look at this guy in Matthew one. Matthew one. Matthew chapter one. Matthew chapter one. Uh, look at uh, verse 11. And Josias, okay, that's a transliteration of Jehoiakim. And Josias begat Jeconias. You see him? There he is. The one the Lord calls Kaniah. And his brethren, about the time they were carried away to Babylon. Okay? So in that height of apostasy in Israel... Right in in the southern kingdom in Judah and Benjamin, right? It's time for the Babylonian captivity, which is what the punishment of God on the nation on those two tribes. Okay, and here's this guy. See, Jeconiah. Um, notice beget, and there we go. He has children. Okay, so legally. We see Jeconias in this first genealogy and seed following. Okay? Now that's important to see for, for what the Lord did. Um, if you go back to Jeremiah 22, go back to Jeremiah 22. You know, just for a kick, I, I went online to see who they called the mother and father of. Uh, Mary. You know what? They say it's not mentioned in the scriptures. <laughs> For the most part, it's not mentioned in the scriptures. And they come up with some kind of thing that's totally wrong by tradition. In other words, not scripture. Okay? And who's Mary's father? Do you have to understand some things? Do you have to start comparing scripture with scripture to determine... Who her father is? Yeah. You gotta study. I don't care what you think. Nor should you. Doesn't matter what you think. Yeah, he the father is identified as Heli. Okay? Um, notice Jeremiah twenty two, verse twenty nine. Oh earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Hear it from all three parts of the Godhead, right? Hey, Earth, what's the biggest issue with the Earth that's ever happened? I mean, there was a flood where the, the Earth was cast down into the miry waters, the deep. There was a flood, right, in the days of Noah, right? This is much more significant than that. And those things, were they significant? Were they huge, as Trump says? Huge? <laughs> yeah, they're huge. These were huge. Yet, this declaration is bigger. Oh, think about it. Oh, earth, earth, earth. Hear this. What's he say? Verse 30. Thus saith the Lord, write ye this man childless. Did he have children? Yeah, but he's in the royal line. As concerns the royal line, he's childless. A 
man that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Okay. The most significant thing that's going to happen and affect the earth is the coming of what? Messiah. And the establishment of what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. And this guy doesn't have a part in it. Okay? We could go into what's the deal with him, but it ain't, it's not good. <laughs> okay? Um, go back to uh, Luke 1. 30 and we'll wind this up Luke 1 30 and Sam could you come up and hold that for me Luke 1 Luke 1 verse 30 and 33 to 33 and the angel said unto her fear not Mary for thou hast found favor with God and behold Thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Okay? Now here's the thing. In Luke 1.43, Mary is called the mother of the Lord. In uh, Galatians 4, 4, we still need that. You can, you can do that, though. <laughs> I know. I'm an easel. I'm an easel. <laughs> um, in uh, Luke, uh, Galatians 4, 4, he's made of a woman. Luke 2, 33, Joseph and his mother. In Luke 2, he says, the Lord says in 48 through 49, he says, I'm about my father's business. Which wasn't Joseph, was it? Okay. Lord Jesus Christ, did he have two fathers? He was begat of what? Holy Spirit. He called him Father. Why? Because his father produced him in the womb of Mary. Did Jacob offer any genetic material? No, that's why it had to be a virgin birth. It had to be a virgin birth. None of that seed from Kaniah could come to Messiah. Okay. His seed wasn't going to make it to the throne of David. So what's the Lord do? It's a virgin birth. Who are his two fathers? His father in heaven and who? Joseph. Joseph. Wasn't that his father? He's the son of Joseph, though. According to the law. He's the son of Joseph. Okay. Um, is there any like him, the Lord Jesus Christ, that was made of a woman? A virgin birth? Conceived of the Holy Ghost? Oh. That's why I say he had two fathers. Okay, one on earth and one in heaven. Okay, now here's the deal. You see the genealogy here? If you can all see this. I've got up here, David the king begat Solomon of Bathsheba. Nathan, okay, the son of David of Bathsheba, the elder brother of Solomon. Okay, so from David here, the genealogy is split in Matthew and Luke. Okay. Here we have the royal line of Joseph, and here we have Mary's lineage. And when you read the genealogy from David on, in both, in Mary's genealogy, there's no Jeconias, there's no Kaniah. His name is what? Omitted. Is the Lord Jesus Christ a blood relative of Mary as the Son of Man? It's her lineage. Do you see that? Blood relative wise, what do we got? A woman. Not Joseph the man. Why? That royal line was contaminated. It was a satanic plot. If you study it, maybe that's a separate message sometime. It is a satanic plot. So what, what line comes along
in order for Messiah to inherit the throne of David. This line, he's a blood relative of Mary. And when you, if you match up from David, one going forward in Matthew and one going backward, you're going to find these different names. Why? Because the two boys, Nathan and Solomon. Okay. Nathan, did he have a different line? Yeah. It's recorded in Luke chapter 3. Then the line we find in Matthew from David. Because there it's Solomon and Jeconias is in that line. So in this line, Mary's line, we find him omitted. Okay? So that's why we can have Jacob begat Joseph and Joseph, the, the son of Heli, Mary's father, produces the Messiah. Without, that's good, Sam, thanks Sam. Without the virgin birth, Christ couldn't have been the Redeemer. Did you hear that? Without the virgin birth, Christ couldn't have been the Redeemer. Mary's line literally makes that so from Nathan. Not just legally from Solomon, but literally from Nathan. Now this explains a lot in those genealogies and the confusion that exists. Okay, And it makes sense that you go back to the law to figure it out, doesn't it? You get it? It's not that complicated. It's really not. Just know from David... Okay, you got Solomon, the one boy, and Nathan, the other boy, and the other genealogy. The other genealogy there is there. And you know, the Lord, he never called himself the Son of God. Only Peter did, and the Father told him that he was the Son of God. What did he call himself? The Son of Man. And that Luke genealogy, he's the mother, right? His mother, is Mary, goes back to Adam to redeem them all. See? The Gentiles and the Jews. Okay, so people go. Oh, I skip the genealogies. If you skip, you see what you miss. You can't. You can't do that. That's foolishness. That's foolishness. A lot of people don't even notice the difference, right? And I mean teachers. I mean teachers. Okay, you think you got it? It's pretty cool, isn't it? How about the scriptures? Are they ever going to let you down in the authorized version? They're ne Even when you can't figure it out, they're not letting you down. You just are what? Like me? Stupid. Hey, we need time, right? We have to study. Some of us are quicker than others. But some of us are quicker in other things than others. I was talking with Gil this morning, and he was saying how his sister was always did well in school. She's real smart. Smart has nothing to do with it. It's not a Bible concept. It's not a Bible word. In fact, the schools of higher learning construct a system that identifies the smart. The smarter one at running Washington. <laughs> Is it, it's irrelevant in the Bible. What do you want for your children and yourself? Wisdom. 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 People get straight A's. And look at the stuff they believe in. Science falsely so-called, right? And we'd be right with them. I mean, do you know how much CO2 is produced by one volcano? So how are you going to make that volcano pay taxes for CO2? Well, you know, that volcano is in the state of Oregon, so we're going to have to t tax or What do they call those guys? Oregonites? <laughs> Oregonians? Orangutan? No, don't say that. Okay. Understand, you, did you know that a third of the atmosphere is going to be absolutely polluted in Jacob's trouble? and a third of the oceans are going to be absolutely polluted in Jacob's trouble? If a third is polluted, what does that mean is still fresh? Two-thirds. Two -thirds. Is that a future time? What about the CO2 thing? <laughs> I mean, nonsense. 
I mean, do you see what would happen to you if you didn't see the Word of God as wonderment and something you should pursue? You'd be what? Like all the salmon going to die upstream. Okay? What's that? They lay eggs. So did Jack. So did Jack and Ias. So did Jack and Ias. <laughs> well, not eggs, but you know. <laughs> There's the male salmon too. They play a role. Okay. Uh, turn to 158. Page 158.